AI is everywhere. We are hearing so many things about it from various different companies. Everybody wants to know how to be able to utilize AI in different capacities. And while Cloudinary has done many things in the overall AI space, this innovation is truly remarkable, in my opinion, because now we have ways to be able to remove certain elements from the overall image. And that can be very helpful. Instead of having to manually crop various aspects out of the details, you can simply prompt our overall system to be able to say, find this thing and take it out. And there's many different ways about able to do this. Aditya, tell me about this. What's the business case for something like this? Yeah, I mean, we're really excited about this feature because um, when you think about complex image editing tasks, um, things like removing, uh, you know, any accessories or props in a, in an image where you want to put focus on a p particular piece of clothing or re reusing a particular image, but taking out any logos that you're not allowed to kind of uh, use in that image. And, and these kind of tasks have traditionally been in the wheelhouse of, um, you know, creative experts with the, with the right kind of expertise, uh, the, you need access to very expensive creative tools to perform a lot of these tasks. And most importantly, it's very time consuming uh, to do these at scale. And so that's the problem we're trying to address with this generative remove and fill feature, which is going to give um, our customers the ability to perform these complex image editing tasks at scale using the power of generative AI. And you can see here with the two examples that DT has created, we have the one where there is a logo that's on the woman's hat, and we're simply prompting to say, remove that overall logo from the space. And now it's absolutely brand agnostic. It, you can tell that this could be used in any different space. And then the second example we can see here is where we're filling the overall image to you be a true one by one aspect ratio of square in this case. And it's recognizing what happened to be on the overall edges of the image and being able to expand that. So that way it can actually fill the space without having to zoom in or create any cropping that would cut out any of the other necessary elements. So this is absolutely fantastic. And then as you can see here, the nice thing about the value of this is that Anybody that is using Cloudinary can do this as long as they're applying the add-ons and the transformations that are associated that this is something that anybody at any plan level should be able to access at any time. So this is a really, really cool feature of DTF. Absolutely. And, and you hit the nail um, there, you know, in terms of the value that we are offering here, it's, it's really twofold. I mean, one is being able to do this at scale programmatically means you're doing it faster you're saving time and resources that are typically spent in doing these kind of tasks. And two is really democratizing this to folks outside of uh, your creative teams who are anyways inundated with uh, you know, these kind of requests often. And you'd rather want them to spend their time creating new uh, experiences versus making these kind of edits on existing uh, images. This is something that we strongly believe can be uh, democratized to, you know, developers in this case, but pretty much anyone that's not, that does not have that kind of expertise, they can go in and uh, easily remove, a, an, uh, you know, a logo or an object within an image, or as you can see with the fill example, be able to kind of um, add additional background to an image. So this is a super powerful uh, feature to help brands kind of scale those complex image editing uh, tasks. I love it. I absolutely love it. And we'll see when Paul comes over here to give us a demonstration, but you'll notice that many of this is done through transformations that are pretty similar to ones that you've worked with if you've ever worked with Cloudinary. As you can see, eGen, Remove, these are similar in many ways because we're calling effects or things that are invoking the background of these images. So once again, taking things that are tried and true, tested by Cloudinary and adding AI capabilities to it, it's fantastic. So Aditya, very excited by this. So Paul, I'm dying to know, 
How do we do it? Uh, well, Sam, I think you hit the nail head when we talk about um, using tried and true methods. I mean, one of the great triumphs of this release is the, that we got these sort of advanced generative AI features into our programmatic interface and in programmable media. So what I want to do is, I, you know, I'm going to show a demo, but it's really going to scratch the surface. Uh, it, I would advise anyone who's interested, just please go to our documentation page, which we're seeing here. Um, you know, a lot of you've probably heard the term prompts when in regards in regards to these AI features. This gives a lot of great insight in how to do uh, prompting. Um, this is like a next step evolution in Cloudberry AI. You can be very specific about what you want to remove. You can say, you know, for example, remove the stick, remove the person wearing green, remove you have a picture of two dogs. Hypothetically, you could say remove the dog on the right, and it's going to be able to understand that. It's really introducing this natural language and we're using cutting edge tools like stable diffusion to, you know, sort of in paint what's being removed. So it's a very seamless uh, experience. So I'm going to use uh, a fairly simple example um, after, after going through all that, but this is going to actually highlight in very quickly how this works. So let's say hypothetically you, you're an e-commerce brand and you have some photo shots that uh, you want to reuse, but perhaps there's a product you no longer have. Um, I think the other example that you talked about with the logo is, is very powerful as well. But in this case, let's just say that for this picture of two people holding hands, you maybe want to remove the bracelet, right? So all you need to do is if you look at my uh, address bar here, again, you're familiar, if you've seen these videos, you're familiar with um, entering the commands in here. So I'm just going to go E gen underscore remove. Now this, this is what, actually is going to um uh, that's the actual name of the transformation it's a generative remove effect so then i'm going to enter my prompt and i'm going to say prompt underscore bracelet so what's happening here now is when i enter this it's actually going to tell cloudinary to examine this image if you can find a bracelet then remove it so i'll do this i'll hit return and as we can see that bracelet's been removed so this this happens, this isn't just removing an object. This is actually removing an object and then making sure that what has been removed is completely seamless. If you come in here and really look at this, at this image, you're not able to tell there was ever a bracelet here. So this is a great example of, you know, just how intelligent this is, how, how it's able to find um, the image, the objects that you're looking for, and then seamlessly remove them. And again, Go check out the documentation because this is really just scratching the surface uh, for the purpose of the demo. And so just to shift gears, talking about the, the generative fill, that is a, a method that's more commonly known as outpainting. So I'm going to actually use our demo playground to demonstrate this just for ease of explaining the syntax. So if you saw Aditya's um, example uh, from the slide, this is actually the URL of that photo. Um, I'm going to come in here and I, I'm going to say I want to have this image and I want it to be a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. So that image itself, the original image that we're going to show, um, and I can actually show it right now. Um, this image is actually, it's in a portrait mode. So this is a fashion phot photograph of a man wearing a suit and it's an excellent photograph, but it's in portrait mode, right? So let's say you don't have, you don't have the original of this. You don't have it in landscape mode, but you need that to fill a spot or fill a one-to-one -one aspect ratio spot. You know, if you could, you could try to do this manually add, you know, copy the bushes, get something there that's going to take forever. And a lot of people don't have that level of skill on hand. So I'm going to do a real live transformation here where I'm going to take this image and I'm going to say, have this image using Cloudinary's pad feature with to an aspect ratio of one to one. And I'm going to use that E underscore gen underscore fill, um, transformation, which is generative fill again, check out our transformation. And it will generate a nice seamless one-to-one uh, -one ratio by generating extra pixels that match the background using AI. So I'm just going to click here and generate, and here it is. So if we look at the original image, we see the bushes here. These are completely generated from AI. It's a very seamless generation. And now we have this great image. We're not altering the original at all. We're simply adding this matching generative AI. And we can look at this as an animated GIF and we can just see, you know, the, looking at this, you can really see how seamless that those generative pixels are. That's really, really cool. And 
I think the interesting thing that you've done is that, of course, we're using a playground for this overall mm -hmm. aspect. But as you can also see from what you said earlier, we have all of the details within our documentation that shows exactly how to call this with your preferred SDKs and be able to manipulate the URLs to be able to get this similar output that mm -hmm. Paul and John demonstrated here. So it is to say, regardless of what you like working with and what frameworks you're using, this is absolutely available to you by using Planetary today. Exactly.